Well, hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Dre. I'm a board certified dermatologist. Today we're talking about something that has been blowing up online recently. Estrogen creams for the face. Can putting hormones on your skin make you look younger? Or is this just another skincare trend that's either misinterpreting or trying to outpace science? In this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you. How estrogen affects your skin and what the latest research says about applying estrogen to your face. We're gonna talk about what the real benefits might be and importantly what the risks might be. So why does estrogen matter for the skin? As women reach menopause, estrogen levels naturally decline. That decline can lead to thinner, drier, and less elastic skin overall. You might notice more fine lines, sagging skin, or that your skin just doesn't have that bounce, that suppleness, that plump, glowy firmness anymore. That's because estrogen helps regulate production of collagen and elastin in the skin and also plays a role in the production of skin's hyaluronic acid levels all of which help to keep your skin firm, elastic, and hydrated. So here's where the logic behind applying estrogen creams to the face comes in. Because estrogen receptors are present in our skin, applying estrogen directly to the skin could locally boost up collagen and elastin production, restoring more youthful appearing skin, almost a localized hormone replacement therapy, if you will, just to the skin. It's a fascinating concept and idea, but as with everything in dermatology, we have to ask ourselves, what does the science actually say about doing this? A recent Prisma-guided systematic review published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology looked at all the available studies on topical estrogens for skin aging. It included different types of estrogens, estradiol or E2, estriol or E3, estrone, conjugated equine estrogens or CEE, methyl estradiol propionate or MEP, and even phytoestrogens. The key point, most of the studies were small. They were mostly done over the short term, like six months or less. And the methods amongst these different studies were not consistent. And only one was a high quality, double blind, randomized control trial. So what did these studies actually show? Well, for estradiol or E2, that was actually examined in 10 trials. Most of the trials showed improvement in skin thickness as well as collagen, meaning it was obvious there was some structural benefit to be had, but the study designs varied quite a bit and only one met the standards for what would be considered high quality evidence. There's concern here for potential gynecologic side effects, which weren't assessed in these studies. We're talking things like uterine or breast changes. Gynecologic side effects, which are a concern, weren't properly addressed in these studies. What about estriol or E3? Three small trials, one randomized and two open label trials. They compared estriol directly to estradiol. Improvements in wrinkles, hydration, and firmness were actually similar to estradiol, but there were some side effects like breast tenderness and an elevation in the hormone prolactin in some of the women. They did actually look at vaginal smears, which stayed normal, suggesting perhaps minimal systemic absorption. Then there's a category known as phytoestrogens. These are plant-derived compounds that are thought to boost up collagen production, skin thickness, and hyaluronic acid production. They've been examined in a few small randomized trials. However, they appear to be less effective than estradiol. The upside is they don't appear to show any sort of hormonal side effects. Methyl estradiol propionate, or MEP. This is actually a cosmetic ingredient. You may have heard of the brand Biopel. They have a line Mpel, which I reviewed several years ago when it first came out, that contains this ingredient. This was tested in three pilot studies, one of which actually used a placebo control. These small studies showed measurable improvements in skin firmness, elasticity, and fine lines. And testing of the serum showed only non-estrogenic metabolites of this compound, which suggests minimal absorption. From a safety perspective, that is promising. Then let's talk about conjugated equine estrogens, or CEE. One study using these showed an increase in skin thickness and fewer fine lines and wrinkles. But participants had vaginal maturation changes and breast tension which kind of hints at the potential for systemic absorption at that point. Estrone, 1%. This actually performed the worst. No improvement in wrinkles. No improvement in elasticity with this. And there even was an increase in expression of matrix metalloproteinase 1. This is an enzyme responsible for the breakdown of collagen. So estrone might actually be counterproductive. Here's something that's important to know because I do get this question a fair amount here on YouTube as well as over on my Instagram. But no studies have actually compared Compare topical estrogen with topical retinoid, sort of the gold standard, anti-aging, photo rejuvenation, collagen boosting, active ingredient you can put on the skin. That 
has a good track record of working to improve wrinkles and elasticity. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that one small study showed that estradiol applied to the skin was slightly less effective than glycolic acid. Okay, yeah. Snooze fast. Glycolic acid has been around for a long time. Skincare products. A lot of you guys already use glycolic acid, so just keep that in mind. Something that we already know works, just like topical retinoids, another ingredient we already know works and appears to be doing better than uh, some topical estrogen. Here's another thing that not enough people are talking about when they mention the use of topical estrogens, and that is they don't appear to be particularly helpful in sun damaged skin. They're not going to reverse the visible signs of sun damage photo aging. In other words, the wrinkles that were brought on by UV damage, upregulation of those matrix metalloproteinases from sun exposure, that's not going to be reversed by topical estrogen application. So to what extent this is beneficial in sun exposed areas? Eh, probably not as much as you might think. So in short, topical estrogens can improve some of the visible signs of skin aging, skin thickness, hydration, wrinkles, at least in the short term. But the studies are fragmented and there's a lot of heterogeneity as far as study design. Many of the studies are using compounded non-FDA approved formulations and a few disclosed industry ties, which doesn't always make something, you know, a complete no-go, but it's just something to keep in mind. But this recent review published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology concluded that we cannot yet make confident claims about the efficacy or the long-term safety and that larger clinical trials are needed before we can say for sure if this is going to be something that is good to pursue. I don't know about you guys, but I have definitely seen an uptick in promotion of topical estrogens on social media, a trend of people applying their prescription vaginal estrogen cream to their face for anti-aging benefit. But a recent piece published in Helio Dermatology Online, dermatologists warned that not only is this off-label practice not evidence-based, it does have the potential for risks as well. What kind of risks? Well, if you have been prescribed a vaginal estrogen cream to use to the vagina, you're using it there and you're also applying it to the face, well, that double hitter could increase the risk of systemic exposures to estrogens. No studies have examined the endometrial safety when both are used, meaning you're applying it to the vagina as well as to the skin. The concern there is for endometrial hyperplasia or even cancer. And some formulations can cause breast tenderness, suggesting potential for systemic absorption, even when applied only to the face. Because these are often compounded products that you might be getting from, say, a direct-to-consumer website, they're not going through the FDA's safety or potency checks. So in short, you want to be cautious with using these. They are hormonal medications. Aside from the potential concerns that I've outlined here, there are also some real side effects that have been known to develop from applying these, these to the skin, namely hyperpigmentation. There is one case report, I will say, of melasma developing on the upper arms from the use of one of these. Makes sense. Estrogens do drive pigment production and hyperpigmentation, hence why many women experience melasma for the first time in pregnancy when these hormones are kicked up. But that's something to keep in mind. And also some people have developed uh, little areas of redness, dilated telangiectasias at the site of application because high estrogens can cause the formation of redness and uh, telangiectasias, dilated prominent capillaries. And of course, irritation is also a potential thing you may encounter with these. They're hormones. They're not just harmless skincare ingredients. And there are other well-established topicals for improving collagen, wrinkles, skin thickness, hydration that don't have these unknown side effects and may even be better in the long run based on what limited studies we do have. So let's summarize. The good is that, yeah, topical estrogen can potentially improve skin hydration, wrinkles, skin thickness, and firmness with a reduction in fine lines shown in some small studies. Phytoestrogens and MEP may be a safer alternative with minimal concern of any systemic impact. But the risks with some of these are systemic absorption. That's especially true with E2, E3, and C. EE, leading to breast tension, prolactin increase, and hormonal effects. Hyperpigmentation and melasma have been reported. That's especially true with estradiol and estriol. And there's really no long-term safety data out there in terms of endometrial risk, breast tissue, or cardiovascular risk for that matter. These formulations are not FDA approved for the face, and the qualities of the products available out there are inconsistent. So while the science is intriguing, at this point, we simply don't have enough evidence to recommend this broadly or safely. But here are some of my final thoughts on this. It's interesting because I actually belong to a forum online, a closed 
closed forum online of dermatologists where they can submit like different clinical puzzling questions and things of that sort. And this very topic came up several months ago. And I was really intrigued to see what other dermatologists said about do they use this in their practice? Is this something they recommend to patients? Do they have patients using these that they've followed? What kind of things are they seeing? And it was interesting because it was like a house divided. Some people were diehard. Yes, this is amazing. More women should be offered this. Whereas other people were like, are you out of your mind? No, no. Some people did say they had observed patients coming in with hyperpigmentation as a result. You know, a lot of times side effects happen and they don't always end up getting reported to any sort of official log. And this is one such case. There are certainly dermatologists out there who are diehard with these, believe in them fully. Whereas others are like, uh, no way, no way. I don't feel comfortable prescribing that for that indication. We need more high quality evidence before I'm ever going to recommend a patient to use that. So there's a lot of variation in opinion out there that you likely will encounter with dermatologists. Let me know in the comments though, you guys, what do you think? Have you heard about using these? Did you watch my video years ago on Emipel? Did you buy that after watching that video, even though I said the fragrance was too strong for my liking? If so, did you see any benefit? I'm really curious to know what your experiences have been because this is an area that has grown in popularity over the years. The more information that comes out, the better for everyone. All right, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.